Hey, Nico here. I'm walking up a mountain right now, uh, hopefully to photograph this new comet. I'll try to say the name if I remember it. It's C slash 2023 A3 to Chinchan Atlas. And that's a long name, so from now on in the video, I'll just call it the Comet or A3, but it's the one that everyone's talking about. Um, and so far, it's been very difficult to photograph. I actually already tried on this same mountaintop in the morning hours right before dawn. This time, it's traveled a bit, uh, so it's at a different angle to Earth, and I'm going to try in the evening hours right after dusk, so right after sunset. And we'll see if I have any more success, because the early morning attempt was a bust. I did not even see it in any of my photos, I think because the sun's glare was just too much. Um, and so it was too close to the sun, I couldn't see it. So it should actually get easier throughout the month. Um, this is the, really the first night in the evening that we'll even have a shot to photograph it. But the reason I'm doing it tonight and not waiting is because uh, looking ahead, like over the next week, it's a cloudy and rainy forecast. Well, right now it's perfectly clear. So we'll, we'll give it a shot. I didn't bring a tracker, I just have a small backpack here. So I didn't even explain why I'm <laughs> hiking up to a mountaintop. It's because the comet, the nucleus, is at very low elevation in the sky. So if you have any kind of obstruction, you're not gonna be able to get, get it before it goes below the horizon especially from my latitude here, which is around 43 degrees north. If you're further south, you build better luck. And I uh, timed this hike, so I'm gonna arrive at the top of the mountain right at sunset, because the peak of when the comet should be photographable is uh, around 45 minutes after sunset. So that'll give me plenty of time to uh, set up my tripod and camera, point it in the right direction, and start snapping away looking for it. So, I don't think this is gonna be like a super impressive photograph, but this is more about the thrill of the hunt. You know, thrill of just finding that comet in the uh, dusky sky. Well, while we're waiting for it to get dark enough to actually photograph the comet, let me tell you a little bit about the gear that I traveled with up here. This is the Peak Design Travel Tripod. It's a carbon fiber tripod that packs down pretty small. It's also very lightweight for hiking. Uh, I have the Canon RA mirrorless camera here. And then for the lens, I picked the classic uh, astrophotography lenses, the Rokinon 135 F2. I sort of debated between, you know, 85, 135, 200 millimeter. So I just sort of picked one in the middle because I don't know exactly how long the tail is going to be and what to expect here. Uh, it's a very beautiful sunset. There's these nice rays from the sun coming up uh, over to the west. And we can see Venus over there to the southwest. And the comet should be closer to the sunset, um, but basically in between Venus and the sunset, but just just a little bit to the south of where the sunset, which is pretty much due west this time of year. So hopefully another 10, 15 minutes here, and it will be dark enough to uh, make out, at least in photographs. <clears throat> All right, I'm just in live view here, and let's see if we can find it. You know what, I think it's right that's there. That's it, that's it. Yep, there it is. I can see it. Okay, editor Nico here. I forgot to mention because of all the excitement of photographing it on the mountaintop that it was naked eye visible. Uh, it sort of looked like we could only see it on the camera screen, but we could actually see it with our naked eye. It was clearly visible, uh, including the tail. You could also photograph it with your iPhone. It was, it was pretty bright, uh, at least on October 12th. So you saw Comet Neowise, and now you've seen Comet A3. Which one do you think is better? A3! A3! I think A3 is the better Comet. I liked the experience of it because it was less prominent than Neowise. I thought it was really fun to search the sky as the sun was setting for it. When we found it, was really, that was really satisfying. 
Okay, so it's the next morning. Last night I did bring a bunch of images into PixInsight and try a normal Comet workflow and it didn't really do much for me. Um, so I'm gonna try something a little bit different, maybe a little bit experimental here. Uh, I mean, experimental in the sense that I'm experimenting. I haven't tried this particular workflow before, but I have uh, an idea of how I might enhance the Comet. And if it doesn't work, I'll either cut this from the video or maybe I'll include it just to show you <laughs> a failed experiment. We'll see. So anyways, I'm going to go here into Photoshop, go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. I'll click Browse, go to my Comet folder. Okay, and you can see these ones have this XMP file. That's because I've already rotated them uh, to the vertical orientation. So hopefully if I select all of these ones now, it'll keep that vertical rotation. If not, it's no big deal. We can do it after the fact. But anyways, I'm going to load all of these into the stack. And I'm not going to, at this point, automatically align them. Um, because if, it, if I do that, it's probably going to use the landscape features, but I want to align them manually using the comet. So I'll just click OK. OK, and it did keep the vertical orientation, which I had done previously with camera raw, so that's good. And you can see what's happening here is it's just loading them all as layers over here. So we'll just let it do that. Okay, and now it's done. I'm gonna grab the move tool, the top tool in the toolbar. And um, if I zoom in here, what I wanna show you is these were taken two seconds apart. If I turn off and on this top layer, you can see that the comet moves. And then if I turn off and on this second layer, the comet moves again. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work from the bottom, turning off the visibility of each of these. So now I have just the bottom layer uh, visible with the eyeball. And then I'll turn on the visibility of the next layer up. But then I'll turn down the opacity of that layer to 50% so that I can perfectly nudge it into place so that it's perfectly lined up with the layer below. And then I'll turn the opacity back up to 100. And then I'll continue that with the next layer. So I turned, up, I turned on this layer, I'm gonna turn the opacity down to 50%, and you can now see there's two nucleuses or nuclei <laughs> of the comet and this one's up here this one's down here of the stack that we're building and so i'm just going to then just grab this layer and pull it down and then use my arrow keys to precisely nudge it into place now your arrow keys will move that layer one pixel at a time so you can see what i needed to do here is i'm just moving it up here what i needed to do is move it a little bit to the right and a little bit down. But now that I've moved it down, I gotta move it a little bit more to the right. And there we go, now it's perfectly aligned. So now I'll turn the opacity of that one back up to 100 and we're just gonna continue like this. And I'm not gonna uh, bore you by showing every alignment here. Okay, now I have them all aligned, so then I'm just going to grab all of them and turn the opacity up to 100%. Then I'm going to, I wanna keep this last layer as like a base layer for keeping the landscape and stuff preserved. So I'm just gonna leave that one alone, but I'm gonna grab all the ones above it. So I'm just gonna click on this one and then shift click on the top one. So all those are selected. And I'm gonna turn those into a smart object. So I'll go here to layer, smart objects, convert to smart object. Okay, and then uh, with it a smart object, I can go back to layer, go down to smart objects and go down to stack mode. And I can stack 
this with a, let's do a median stack. So this is just like stacking in any other program. It averages the pixel values. It's a very simple form of stacking in Photoshop, but uh, should still work pretty well. Okay, cool. So you can see it, the image became a lot smoother. And if we turn this off and on, uh, that's about it. <laughs> Just became a lot smoother, which is the same sort of thing I had in Photoshop, I mean, in PixInsight. And um, basically smoothing out the noise is all I got in PixInsight as well. Um, it's still very difficult to bring out this tail because of the sky gradient, which is very extreme. You can see that there is something there, but it's uh, pretty faint. But let's give it a try here in Photoshop. So let's see if I go to adjustments. I'm going to add a curves adjustment to this smart object. If I make it really bright, Just seeing if that's actually bringing out any more detail in the comet. Yeah, I mean, I think you can see the tail a bit um, further into the sky with that curves adjustment, right? So you can see it extends up to that star naturally. And then past that star, it basically fades out. Okay, so here's where we are after curves. Now, originally I thought maybe I would try to mask this stacked version with this version um, because I thought, oh, the landscape's gonna look so blurry in the stacked version, but it actually looks very similar. These little trees down here or whatever, which are in the foreground were already blurry in the original version because they were like a few feet in front of me. Um, nothing I could do about that. So I actually don't think I'm going to do any kind of blending between the stack and the single exposure. I'm just going to try to enhance basically the stacked version here. So uh, we've already done some curves. Let's try a little bit of sharpening, see what that does. One nice thing with a smart object is when you put on a filter, it automatically adds as a smart filter. So I can then just turn this off and on and see if I like the result. Yes, it made the stars a little bit um, more prominent, but I actually would like them a little bit more prominent still. So I'm gonna try a different filter here. Filter maximum at one. So it just takes the stars that are like one pixel in radius and makes them quite a bit brighter, um, which I think fills out the picture a little bit. Okay, so we've done a little sharpening, a little curves work. The tail is a little bit longer than in the original photo uh, because of the stack and the curves. Um, it's a little bit garish though, compared to uh, just the single exposure. So I'm gonna try to just um, do a little bit of a gradient mask on the curves layer. Um, so I'm just going to pick the gradient tool here and we'll just play around with a gradient mask, uh, for this sunset portion, at least. Just to show you what that did is uh, here's with it enabled the gradient mask and here's if I disable it. And you can see the sunset just gets a little bit too bright. It almost distracts from the comet. Um, so with the gradient mask, I just bring down the brightness of the sunset a little bit and I think the comet is, is even better. So let's look at what we've done in terms of here's a single exposure and here's the stack. And so I, <laughs> I'm not going to say it's uh, better, but I, you know, just to make this video more interesting, I'm going to include all this processing and, and you can 
be the judge. Now, I will say that it's going to be easier to stack and do more processing on the comet when it gets out of this sunset area. <laughs> the big issue right now is that it's very hard to do anything when it's like the background is almost as bright as the comet and it's also a gradient and there's all these issues. Once we can shoot the comet up here, um, then it's going to be, a, we can just use traditional comet processing methods, uh, like in PixInsight or Serial, which I've already uh, done a video on. I don't know if I've done it on PixInsight because there's so many good ones out there already on that. Um, but I, I've done Serial and Deep Sky Stacker. Well, till next time, this has been Nico Carver. I hope you enjoyed this one and uh, good luck with the comet hunting and clear skies.